My brother's name was Howard Brown. He's 66 years old, or was 66 years old. He's an identical twin to his brother Harvey, who uh, is my sole brother I have left. I am their primary and have been their primary caregiver. Um, they're uh, special. They require some additional help socially. Howard was a funny guy. He used to watch old movies, Humphrey Bogart, old, old movies. That was his thing. It's just, it's a special case because they're both different. So to, to just drop them somewhere and leave and run, I couldn't really do that. I'm not built that way. We came here and they made us feel like home. It didn't feel like a hospital. It felt like a, a, a better option, a way better option. Matthew's house feels like home when you, when, you, uh, when you arrive after work or you don't even knock at the door. <laughs> You just park and walk in and go visit your loved one or go visit some staff to give you some strength before you go in to visit your loved one. There's room for people to stay. If you're from out of town or relatives, there's rooms. It's a home. It's a, I've got a shower for, for residents, for visitors. There's, I've seen just about everything for, uh, for the staff accommodating people and making them feel special and that it's okay to go home because they're well cared for when you're not there, guaranteed. Um, my brother that was um, a resident was you know, allowed to have dignity. They did whatever they could to please him uh, in his stay and I guarantee that. And my other brother um, because they're identical twins, spent a lot of time here at Matthew's house where he was made feel welcome. My brother was there for quite some time, I don't know the, the time frame, probably almost three months, which is a long stay, which I was grateful for all of that. I can't tell you some of the things the staff were just amazing. I would have to say that they were angel-like. They gave us a chance to breathe as a family. I personally, I mean, everybody has their own personal beliefs, but I, um, home was not a place for this to happen for us because I have four kids and to bring this home was not a choice for me, not a sound choice. Uh, and the people that I met took a load off me right away. My surviving brother still comes regularly uh, every week. And they also have a volunteer that comes to visit them on Fridays. And they go out for hours on end, which is great because it's helping him to cope with the loss of his brother and a chance to live life. I personally am gonna donate money to Matthew's house because it's the right thing to do. Because since my brother has passed, uh, which isn't that long ago, I've known of three other people that have been admitted to Matthew's house. They're since gone. But you really don't know uh, in a community of our size, not even that small anymore, um, until you've had an experience with Matthew's house. Just who's involved in the community silently. And there's a lot more people than I thought that donate here and I'll, I'll be one of those people. The before care, before you even get here, to the care that you get while you're here, to the care that we're still getting. I've been told that we're welcome to do so until we don't need it anymore. That's, uh, that's, that's unheard of. So if you're asked to donate money, there's a reason. 
because uh, angels don't grow on trees. <laughs> <laughs>